Welcome to this predictive paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. For us to create the smallest number, we need to pick the smallest digits at the start of the number. So the smallest digit is 3, then the next smallest digit is 4, next smallest digit is 5, and then the next smallest digit is 8. But it wants it to be an odd number, and this is an even number. So we have to move that 8 forward 1 and have that 5 at the end. So the smallest odd number is 3485. In this question, we're given the output as 53. So we know that the output was 53. So now we've kind of got to work backwards. And when we work backwards through a function machine or a number machine, we do the opposite of what it says. So this first one says plus 9. But when we go backwards, we do the opposite, which is take away 9. So we do 53 take away 9, which is 44. Now we can check that by going the other way, so 44 plus 9 is 53, so that works. The next one says times 4, so the opposite would be divided by 4. So we're going to do 44 divided by 4, and that gives us an input of 11. Now let's check the whole thing. We put in 11, 11 times 4 is 44, 44 plus 9 is 53, so we know we've got it correct. To answer this question, we basically need to find the lowest common multiple of the um, 10 minutes here and the 15 minutes here. So we're going to start off just by doing the 10 and 15 times table. So it would be 10, 20, 30, and 15 times table would be 15 and 30. So the lowest common multiple is 30. So after half an hour, these buses will um, sync up. They'll both leave at the same time. And all buses start service at 9 o'clock. So it will be half an hour after 9 o'clock, which will be 9.30. So for this question, we need to understand that the units um, we currently have are in metres per second. And the units we want to get them to or convert them to are kilometres per hour. Now, to convert um, the meters part is quite easy because all we need to do is divide by a thousand. And when you divide the top of a fraction by a thousand, you just, all you do is you just divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we're just going to divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we've got 95 and we're going to divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we get 0. 0.95 and that's going to be kilometers per second because we haven't dealt with the seconds yet so that's the easy part the more difficult part is converting the seconds to hours so to convert seconds to hours we divide by 60 and then divide by 60 so we divide it by 360 seems simple enough but the seconds are at the bottom of a fraction and when you divide the bottom of a fraction by something, you actually times the whole fraction by that thing. So we're going to times the whole fraction by 360. And so we do 0 0.095 times 360, and you get the answer of 342 kilometers per hour. So our answer is 342 kilometers per hour. So the pass mark for the test is here, and we can see that there are two students who passed the test. So it's two students out of two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. And we want this as a percentage, so we're going to times it by 100%. So we do two over seven times 100, and that gives us 28.571, blah, blah, blah. And it says it wants it to the nearest percent, so that will be 29%. To find the angle marked x, we first of all need the formula that the sum of 
the interior angles is equal to the amount of sides the polygon has. Take away 2 and then times by 180. So this has 14 sides, so it's 14 take away 2, which would be 12 times 180. And then when we do that on the calculator, we get 2160. Now that's the sum of them, so that will be all of them added together. So to find out what x is, we just need to get that 2160 and divide it by 14. And that's going to equal 154. 0.285 blah 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 and it says it wants it to round its two decimal places so that's going to be 154.29 the midpoint of a line is just the halfway point of the line and we can see that the halfway point will be here and so the coordinates of that point are 0 2 so to draw a line of best fit, you want to make sure that roughly there's the same amount of um, data on top of your line and below your line. Um, now, but if you think about it, this line here would also would work uh, according to that rule. Clearly, the um, line of best fit needs to go with the data. So I'm going to start it roughly here and then just draw a line going down like that. Now, you might notice that sometimes... Um, like so if I draw that you might notice that we've got uh, one two two below maybe this one as well three below and then one on top don't worry too much if there's not a complete equal amount on top or below um, what we mean is if it looks like that that's clearly wrong because you've got um, all of the data below and obviously this one here you want it roughly so that um, there's equal amounts at the top and bottom. But if if you have it slightly off, so slightly down here or something, um, don't rub it out. Um, it's chances are you'll get the mark. They're quite lenient when you draw lines of best fit. So when we say y is directly proportional to x, what we mean is whenever x doubles, y will double. Whenever x halves, y will halve. Um, now, we've got this um, proportionality sign here. And to make that in equals, all we need to do is introduce a k constant to the right-hand side. So it's y equals something times x. Now to find out what that something is, to find out what that constant is, what we're going to do is feed in the value of y and the value of x that we have. So we're going to feed those in. So y is 55.3 and x is 7. So it would be 7k. And we're just going to put our lines in and solve this. So it's going to be divide by 7 both sides. And 55.3 divided by 7 is 7.9. And that's what k is. So we're going to rewrite this equation here, this formula here. y equals 7.9x. And that is actually our answer. So we're going to first of all work out where 9 is on the y-axis. Well, we've got 8 here and 10 here, so 9 will be halfway in between. And what we're going to do now is just draw a line across at 9, and then wait until it hits the um, line. And then we're going to draw a line down, and you can see here that x is 1. So our answer is that x equals 1. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the area of the trapezium. And the formula for that is half brackets A plus B times H. Now A and B have to be the parallel sides. So here we've got the um, two parallel sides here. Let's, show, let's pick a different colour. Here and here. So that is A and B. And then the h is the um, perpendicular distance between them. So perpendicular means it hits it at right angles. So that's what we've got here. So the area would be half times a, which is 28, plus b, which is 14, times the height, which is 14. And so that would be 294. Next we'll do the circle. Now it doesn't look like we've got um, anything for the circle, but actually the height here 
is actually the height of the circle as well. So the height of the circle is the same as the diameter. So the diameter of the circle is 14. Therefore, the radius would be half of that, which is 7. And the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So it would be pi times 7 squared, which would be 153.938, blah, blah, blah. Now I'll keep that in my calculator, because next thing we'll do is the shaded area part. Um, and it says we want to work out the area of the shaded region. So the area will be the total area, which will be the trapezium, take away the area that we don't want, which is this bit here, which will be the circle. So the trapezium is 294, the circle is 153.93, blah, blah, blah. And when you do that, you get 140.061, blah, blah, blah. It says it wants it to two decimal places, so it would be 140.06. So I'm going to start off just with a quick sketch. And we know that the uh, bearing of B from A is 85 degrees. So we're going to have A here and B here. And let's just draw a line between them. And let's do both our north lines. And so we know that this angle here is 85 because it's the ang angle on the sorry the bearing of B from A, so it's 85 degrees. So now it says work out the bearing of A from B. So the first thing we can do is actually just draw a line going down here. And we know that this angle here will also be 85 degrees um, because of alternate angles. It's always best to write that down somewhere. So we can just put in brackets here, alternate angles. And we know that this angle here is going to be 180 degrees. So it's a straight line. And I'm not a fan of, of doing um, the reasons on the diagram. Um, so maybe, perhaps I should have labelled this an X and this a Y and written X equals 85 and Y equals 180 somewhere else. And so to work out what the um, bearing is, I just need to do 180 plus 85. So 180 plus 85 is going to be 265 degrees. Okay, let's just do a quick sketch of the graph. And we've got um, coordinate C is at 213, so we're going to say that's roughly there. And that's C, and that's at 213. And then we've got D, which is at coordinates 84. And we're just asked to find the length of the line segment, so this length here. Now, what I can do is I can draw in a right angle triangle here like so and we've got the right angle there and we actually know uh, two of the lengths so if it's 13 high for C and then 4 high for D that means that this length here is going to be 9 the um, X coordinates are 2 to 8 and so that's a difference of 6 so, and we're looking for the last one. So with Pythagoras, we are going to label the sides. And so we've got A here, we've got B here, and then C has to be the one opposite the right angle. And we're just going to write out the formula, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And A we've said is 9, and B we've said is 6. And so when you do that, you get, what, 117. Then we're going to just quickly solve it by square rooting both sides. And so we're going to square root 117, which is 10.816, blah, blah, blah. And it says it wants two decimal places, so our answer will be 10.82. So in this question, we've got a right angle triangle, and we're asked for length BC, and we're given the other two lengths. It's going to be um, Pythagoras. 
And so for Pythagoras, I just label the sides A, B, and C, but C must be the one opposite the right angle. And Pythagoras says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We don't know A squared, but we know what B is, which is 5.2, and we know C is 11. So when we do that, we get A squared plus 27.04 equals 121. And we just solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is take away the 27.04 from both sides. So we get a squared equals uh, 93, oh, 9 point, no, 9, <laughs> 93.96. There we go. And to work out what a is, we just square root both sides. So it would be a equals 9.96. 693 blah blah blah. Asks us to do two decimal places, so we write 9.69. So, to find our new triangle coordinates, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see what we have to do to get from the center of enlargement to each of the corners of A or the vertices of A. So, to get from the center of enlargement to this coordinate, we go left 2. But it says scale factor 3. So instead of going left 2, scale factor 3 would be 2 times 3. It's going to go left 6. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the new coordinate for our shape is going to be here. We're going to do the same to the other part. So up, 2, 3, 4. And 4 times 3 is going to be 12. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we've got to go left 2 to line it up with our coordinate here. And so we'll go left 6. So what 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our new coordinates here. The bottom right one's just going to be a shared one because it doesn't go anywhere. So we draw in our new shape. And there we go. And it says to label it B, so I'll put a B in it. So here we're asked to factorise a quadratic, and we know it's a quadratic because it's got an x squared term, an x term, and a number term. And what we're going to do is we're going to be, first of all, putting two sets of brackets down with an x at the start of each. And what we're trying to find is what number goes here and what number goes here. So we're going to start by looking at this minus 45. And it's a special number because we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to make that minus 45. We're also going to look at this plus 12 here, because we're looking for two numbers that add together to make that 12. So what we can do is write out the factors of minus 45. And so that's going to be minus 1 and 45, minus 3 and 15, minus 5 and 9, and then the same but the other way around. So 1 and minus 45. 3 and minus 15, and 5 and minus 9. Remember, we're looking for them to add together to make 12. So we look down the list here, which ones add together to make 12? This one here, minus 3 plus 15 is 12. So our answers will be minus 3 and plus 15, or the other way around. So this question is a simultaneous equations question. And so we're going to have to write down some equations. So it says two apples and three pears cost £3.80. So two apples, I'm going to call it A, A for the price of an apple, plus three pears, so 3P, cost £3.80. Now I'm going to do this as 380 just because it's easier to work with integers rather than decimals. And it says three apples, so 3A, plus eight pears, cost £7.80. Or 780 pence. Okay, so the first thing I do is try and get these numbers the same. So 3 and 8, um, they both go into 24, so I need to make them both 24. And what some people do is they just label this A and this B, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything in equation A by 8, so that this becomes 24. So it's going to become 8A, and so we go times the 2A by 8, which will be 16a plus 24p, 
and 380 times 8 is 3040. And we're going to do the same with B, but this time we're going to times it by 3. So we have 3B. And we're just going through everything here and we're timesing it by 3. So 9A plus 24P, which is good. That's what we wanted. And 780 times 3 is 2340. So now we've got both of these the same coefficient. What we can do is we can eliminate going downwards. Now, if they are the same, the S in same is the S in subtract. If they were different signs, so if these weren't both positive, if one of them was negative, different, the D in different is the D in add. So here they are the same, so we are going to subtract, and we're going to subtract going downwards. So we're going to start off by doing, and I can just do a little line here to show what we're doing. So we're subtracting going downwards, and we're going to do 16A take away 9A, which will be 7A. 24p take away 24p, which is nothing, which is why we did that, is to eliminate them. And then 3040 take away 2340 will be 700. Then I can put my lines in. And all I need to do now is just divide both sides by 7. And I get A equals 100. So we know that apples cost 100, or one pound. We need to work out what pears cost. So I just need to pick one of the equations. I'm just going to pick this top one here. And I'm going to write out, instead of A, we know that A is a pound or 100 pence. So plus 3P equals 380. So that's going to be 200 plus 3P is 380. And then again, I'm just going to draw my lines down. And we're going to subtract 200 from both sides. So it's going to be 3p equals 180. And then we're going to just divide by 3 both sides. And we've got p equals 60. So a pair costs 60. Now we can check this by using the other equation there. So 3 times 100 is 300, plus 8 lots of 60 is going to be, what's that, 480? So it's going to be 780. So we know that we've got it right. To find the resultant vector, we just get the two vectors and we add the tops and add the bottoms. And it's a plus minus 13, so it's 9 take away 13. When we do that, we get uh, 13 at the top and minus 4 at the bottom. There's a lot going on with this question, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all of the time signs that we don't normally show. So we've got 10 times 12x times y to the power of 4 times 13 times x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4. And I'm going to reorder these to put the numbers together, first of all. And with multiplying, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. So I'm not changing anything. I'm going to put the x's together. And I'm going to put the y's together. So... First thing to do is 9 times 13, which is just 117. Then we've got x to the power of 12 times x to the power of 4. Now we know when we multiply two powers of the same base, and the base is x on both of those, we just add the powers. So it's 12 plus 4, which is 16. So it'd be x to the power of 16. And then y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4, we just add them together, so it's y to the power of 8. I'm going to draw out the two um, triangles that we have here just separately and so we can see a little bit clearer about what's going on and it's actually a good advice to actually draw them separately and so here we've got AB which is, uh, if I get off that mode, 33 metres and so this is AB and this other triangle is ADE I should probably have labelled that on and we've got the 91 there and we've got 13 there and then we've got 147 here. I think that's all. And we're asked to find length AD. So the first thing to notice is that these triangles are similar. And the way we know is that this angle and this angle will be equal. Because on the original diagram you can see that they make an F. Which means they're corresponding. Because we've got the parallel sides. Same with these two angles. They're going to be corresponding for the same reason. And this top one is a shared angle. 
so they're going to be equal on both diagrams. When you've got two triangles that have equal angles, they're definitely similar, so one's an enlargement of the other. If they're similar, it means that we can find a scale factor. And so what I'm going to do is just find a scale factor between the 13 and the 91. To do that, we do the big number divided by the little number, and that gives us 7. So the scale factor is going to be 7. And we're going to work backwards with the scale factor. And we're looking for length AD, which is this length here. And so we're going to do this one, and we're going to times it by the scale factor. So times it by 7 to find out what the new length is. So 33 times 7 is 231. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.